and let us all that we can to build a better future. So I remember saying on the show that, you know, hey, the New Hampshire primary looks like it could be a tight race. And there is, you know, I, but I said with absolute confidence that Trump was going to win it. And I said that if I was wrong, I'd apologize on air. Well, I'm not wrong. <laughs> I'm not wrong at all. Who's surprised by this? Trump wins New Hampshire. Duh. Duh. Of course he was going to win New Hampshire. Of course. And he's going to win the next primary and the next primary over. He's going to walk away from all these legal troubles. And there is a possibility that, yes, maybe, maybe the law will come down on Trump. But you think that's going to stop his supporters? His supporters want Trump. And the Republican Party knows this. The media knows this. And everyone wants to put on this virtue signaling of we got to stop Trump. Listen, media, Trump detractors, the best thing for your business right now is that Trump walks away for these legal troubles and you get to talk about him for four years. If he wins a reelection, you get to talk about him. That's that's what you could do. Plus, it benefits you if, if he's president. Right. Because then guess what? You get to fundraise off of scared, panicked liberals. There you go. That's that's all you have to do. Like. At the end of the day, this is the best thing to happen to corporate media. This is the best thing to happen to all those vote blue, no matter who's sycophants. I mean, yeah, you were ragging on Trump during the Biden years, but I mean, the views weren't coming in. Trump gets back in the office. You can eat again. So what are you complaining about? Don't don't give me this BS of our country, our country, our country. Well, you're not paying attention to the Carrie Lake video with Jeff DeWitt. I mean, our politicians have been being bought and sold by both Democratic and Republican Party bosses and their bosses who live in fancy ivory towers. You think Trump's the end-all, be-all threat? No. No, he's probably the best thing to happen to you. The way this economy's going? Come on, corporate media. Don't be stupid with me. You can be stupid with everybody else, but don't be stupid with me. And my audience sees through you, too. So let's talk about Trump wins New Hampshire. Who saw that coming? I did. Four years ago. So let's talk about it. There we go. Shocking news. Breaking news. I hope all of you are sitting down. Decision Desk says Trump has won New Hampshire. Decision Desk has just called it for President Trump. Decision Desk has just called it for President Trump uh, reporting just now. And that's what this is no surprise, Marjorie. No, it's no surprise. We've been calling this since 2021. It was always going. Uh, uh, correction. Harlan's V has been calling us since 2020. OK. We saw this happening. As soon as Trump got defeated in the 2020 election, myself and Daniel Upker, we both said that he was going to run for re-election in 2024 and that we'd both be surprised if he didn't. We've covered since then and even at the beginning of this election cycle too how Republican voters wanted Trump. Stop being stupid with me, media. Going to happen. Of course, Nikki Haley was going to lose. She's just stupid enough to stay in the race, I Brian. We are done with the neocons. We are done with the Republican rhino establishment. We're sick and tired of the uniparty. This is a referendum on the Republican Party, and they better listen up because they have been sent a message loud and clear. We are sick of their ways. It's time for America first, and it's happening to. So let's pull up this video here now. Former DeSantis voter, oh my goodness, and donor, sorry, former DeSantis donor now backs Trump. Let's talk about it on CNN. And if Nikki Haley does do better than expected tonight, and obviously we don't know what these exit polls necessarily <laughs> Oh, you foolish CNN anchor. What's wrong with you, lady? Why, why, why would you say that was a straight face? Necessarily mean, and they are changing, right? But 49% sure. of the people who go uh, have gone to the polls so far who have picked up a GOP ballot, say that Biden won legitimately. 49% say that he did not. Now, I'm not saying that's a ceiling on Trump's support. Perhaps it is, perhaps it isn't. Just an important number to have out there. If she does mm -hmm. exceed expectations, would that change your mind at this point, Dan? It wouldn't change my mind at all. Look, New Hampshire, either way, New Hampshire is going to be the high water mark for Nikki Haley. When we roll into South Carolina and beyond, we have more closed primaries with more red, more conservative voters. And, you know, when Nikki Haley lands... You know, it's going to be really sad. Nikki Haley stays in the race and she loses, loses her own home state to Trump. I mean, if you thought Elizabeth Warren had it bad, 
Nikki Haley might have it worse, man. It's in South Carolina, she's going to find a, uh, you know, a state where the governor and both senators are backing Donald Trump. And I'd like to point out, you know, Ron DeSantis had 15 state legislators or 75 state legislators in South Carolina supporting him in this race. And Nikki Haley had 15, not to mention, uh, you know, the, the big number that Trump has. So I think that it, in that state, she's going to perform very badly in her home state. And it just gets okay. worse as you look forward to the Texas, Oklahoma's and Tennessee's. All right. Well, Dan, I. He ain't wrong. Of course, here's Vivek. Look at this again. 52.9% to Haley's 45.7%. Haley, listen, I'm not going to tell you what to do. You don't have to listen to me. You could say, oh, that leftist Kit Cabello. Ugh, I don't like him. Listen, I'm going to do you a favor. Listen, they're going to laugh at you if you go to South Carolina. Everyone's going to laugh at you when you lose your state. Do, do, do you really think that South Carolina is going to back you up, Haley? Because I, I think, I, I think, and I'm very sad to say this, Sunshine, but it's over. It's over. South Carolina ain't going to go for that. Now with the party? I am. I am, Jesse. I'm right here at the uh, party, the after party right here. And look, I think this is a decisive win for Donald Trump. That's what we're seeing tonight. I think there's actually an interesting view of this, which is it's like a terrain for the general election. You have more independents and Democrats, it looks like, voting in this GOP primary than registered Republicans themselves. And many of the largest donors to the Democratic Party have been the largest donors to Nikki Haley, who's Donald Trump's opponent here. So I think this is a prediction of what you're going to see in the general election. And the decisive margin we see tonight is in some ways, I think, something that bodes well for Trump heading into the general election in November to reunite this country. And so in my view, the general election really begins tonight. I think the Republican primary, for all intents and purposes, is over tonight, and I think the party and the country are better off if we see that for what it is. Is Vivek Ramaswamy calling for Nikki Haley to suspend her campaign? Look, I do think that would be the right thing for the country, unambiguously. And also just to call a spade a spade, Jesse, as you know, I've not been unafraid to do that in this campaign. If Nikki Haley does stay in, it will send the signal that her only path and what she's playing for is for Donald Trump being eliminated by forces outside of this process, by the judicial system, by secretaries of state in places like Maine or elsewhere. And I think that's downright wrong. I think it's and you better believe that there's going to be a lot of liberal groups that are going to want to support Nikki Haley. Case in point, this video here. Joy Reid calls for the donor class to fund Nikki Haley's shadow campaign just to make it harder for Trump. Just a short 20 second video stuff in Texas. Now, I'm not saying she could actually get it. Yeah. But if you're the donor class that wants Trump gone, you tell her, fuck it out for a few months. I'm going to put some more money in your bank account, because if he gets convicted, you do want to have a candidate with or enough delegates to go yeah, back actually, that yeah. can be on the floor and have but a floor fight. With Donald Trump. Isn't too yes. And there's Rachel Maddow, too. See, here's the thing. Everyone on this panel should be happy right now. They got so much. If if Trump walks away from these legal troubles, theoretically, they I, I maybe they're putting on a show, obviously, to a point of concern, but maybe privately. And I'm willing to bet this. In fact, let's have democracy in the chat. Type one if you think their concerns for the republic and democracy and freedom are sincere and they're taking their jobs very seriously to stop Trump. Type two if you think, oh, they're putting on a show, kid. But behind closed doors, they are praying to God. They're casting any kind of good vibes so that Trump gets in, because then if he gets reelected, they got four years of content. It's show business, baby. Corporate media is not there to inform you. Corporate media is not there to empower you. Corporate media and the whole system isn't there to lift us up. It is there to earn money and keep the masses dumb. That's why we need independent media. See, I see this happening a mile away, two miles away. Hell, I see this happening years ago. They want Trump. Rachel Maddow, look, she, listen, she has to buy a new summer home. She has to buy a new boat and a new car. And unfortunately, that stuff doesn't buy itself. You know, I think we would all appreciate if we got a knock at the door of we open it up and we're shocked and it's a new house. It's a new boat and it's a new car. And they say, hey, how you doing, so-and-so? We bought ourselves to be with you. Now, that's a great dimension to live in, but it's not based in reality. The real reality is these people want Trump back in. 
They do. And the establishment, they're trying to do everything they can to make sure the system remains the same as is. So those pundits have to put on an act because even they know, even they know who serves them their nice warm chocolate chip cookies. But privately, you know, there is there is the other scenario. They can profit off of it. This country, there is no viable path for her to defeat him through the front door. And so what we're really just seeing is the very people like Reid Hoffman, who are paying for the lawsuits against Donald Trump, now becoming the largest donors or among the largest donors to Nikki Haley. It becomes obvious that the thing they're playing for is Trump to be eliminated by what I view as illegitimate means. And I think that is bad for this party, bad for this country. That's what that will mean. And so for that reason, I do think the right decision for Nikki Haley to make for the country and for the Republican Party tonight or very soon after tonight is to make this a one person nomination for the Republican nomination and then head to a general election where we can focus, I think, Jesse, this year on delivering a 1980 style moral mandate, a Reagan style landslide. When you have the likes of John Fetterman even recently talking about the importance of the southern border, that says that many Democrats and independents and libertarians agree with the views of this America first movement. That's why I took myself out of the race to endorse Donald Trump. I think the other Republicans have done the right thing. It's time for Nikki Haley to do the right thing as well and focus on a landslide this November that, dare I say, will reunite this country. And that's why I'm in this. All right, Vivek, thank you so much. Enjoy the party. Try to behave yourself. Thank you. It's now bringing Dana Perino, co-anchor of America's Newsroom. And Mike. Now let's also pull this up here. Obviously, the title, Trump wins New Hampshire in blow to Haley. Yes, Nikki Haley. She lost. She lost. But who's who's not surprised by this? I'm not. I want to pull this up here as well. Let's play this video as well. Here, take a look at the numbers. Among Trump voters, 70% of them, according to our exit polls, are registered Republicans. Donald Trump his support, 27% of his voters are registered undeclared or independents. Uh, 3% were unregistered before today. Look at how that compares with Nikki Haley. It's a complete reversal. It's an alternate universe. Among Haley voters, 70% are registered undeclared. Only 27% are registered Republicans. And that's the system. That's the whole story. Everything falling apart before Nikki Haley, before the establishment, before anyone. And yet we have been constantly been bombarded by the establishment and saying that, oh, Nikki Haley has a chance. Nikki Haley can do this. Nikki Haley can do that. Well, that's not the truth of it. The truth of it is that none of these candidates ever had a chance. And yet in a surprise, surprise, which I'm not surprised by. Trump wins New Hampshire, and he's going to win the next primary. He's going to win the next primary over. That's just how it is. You know what I have to say to that. Nikki, that's not your name, Haley. You lost. When you go to South Carolina and lose worse than Warren, there's only one word for you. Oof. 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 She doesn't have a chance. It's over for her. It's over for everyone within the establishment that's trying to overtake Trump. Look at how popular he is with his indictments and his mugshot. Dude, do dissidents. Keen from do dissidents was there in New Hampshire. He talked to the Trump supporters. He talked to the Trump voters. They're all for him. These other candidates there who are running in Republican primary, and yes, even the Democratic candidates, because we're going to talk about the Democrats right after this one. They never. They never had they they never had any stable ground. They never had a real clear path to walk forward. They're crawling to reign relevant. Trump's going to win the nomination. And if you think his voters or supporters are going to go for somebody else, that's not going to happen. It's a foregone conclusion. Simple as that.